with me on the phone is uh, Maura McDermott. Hello, Maura. Hi, Bill. Hi. How are you? Thank you for having me on. Sorry for the technical difficulties. No, that's fine. Hey, uh, same thing happens to me all the time. (laughs) Um, I, I, uh, well, first of all, I thank you for calling us and... uh, I'm interested to see uh, what you found out about with this. Uh, this is a business story. The four in ten millennials on Long Island now live with relatives. That's Ooh. right. The Long Island Index released a survey showing that, as you say, uh, four out of ten young adults on Long Island live with parents or in-laws or other relatives. Uh, that is growing. Um, back in 2004, uh, that number was 10 percentage points lower. It was closer to about three in ten. Uh, so it's something that is of concern not only to the uh, young adults who are living on Long Island, that's ages 18 to 30. Before, uh, but also their parents who, you know, want to see them uh, living independently. Um, and it's something that I think is of concern to a lot of Long Islanders that I've been hearing from. Yeah, sure. Well, I, I, you know, um, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it. What, what, do you, what would you say after you did this story would, would be the main factor? I would say from the folks that I've talked to, there are three main factors. The first, of course, and the most prominent is Long Island's high housing costs. Uh, when you look at our average rent, the average rent on Long Island in the last three months of last year was $2,200. And rents are rising so quickly that that average works out to paying $2,000 more over the course of a year than you would have paid just five years ago. Uh, so rents are rising very rapidly on Long Island. In addition to that, uh, for those who own homes, uh, property taxes are, of course, as everyone knows, very high. Uh, the average property taxes on Long Island were eleven thousand uh, dollars just recently, and the average property taxes in Suffolk County were more than nine thousand. Um, so this, it's, and then you add into that the the high cost of buying a home. It's just very very difficult for recent college graduates and. And, and others who live independently on Long Island. Yeah. Another factor is the job market. While uh, the number of jobs is growing, a lot of those jobs are in lower paying industries like the retail industry or in lower paying job categories like home health aids. And the third factor that some people raise is the difficulty of commuting into Manhattan to higher paying jobs based there. So those are the three main problems that I've heard talked about. Right. Mm. Well, uh, um, and one of the ones that I'm familiar with and that I've heard is uh, the student loan deal is the other. Uh, exactly. You know, That's right. There's more student. There's more student. Lo- as far as I understand it, you're the reporter, so I'm just the uh, the newsreader. So uh, I can say things you can't. <laughs> 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 um, uh, but what I've heard uh, is that student debt is a bigger issue than credit card debt in the United States in general. Absolutely, and on Long Island in particular, we have very high level of ed- high levels of education, which is wonderful, of course. But it also means that Long Islanders, uh, and especially, of course, our young adults, are saddled with very high levels of student debt, which mm-hmm. makes it even harder to either buy a home or even rent a home. Oh yeah. Well, I think well, one of the things that makes my uh, my bell go off is that that idea that you know people say that this situation is is difficult or you know it's i think it's impossible and i think four out of ten young adults on long island agree with you yeah i i also think that that's uh um, conservative right you think it's even higher than that you know it's interesting i spoke with a number of young adults uh, for this article, and I asked them, of your friends who live on Long Island, uh, what share would you say live with family versus living on their own mm-hmm. in that age range? And everyone I spoke with said either a majority or almost everyone. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the only reason I bring that up is I, I get to hang around with a lot of young kids. I, I, I play drums in, a, in my daughter's rock and roll band. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's, it's an original band, so we're, we're actually, it's a business that we got kind of got going. But I get to meet a lot of these people who are very smart, very educated, but it, I'll go with your second estimation. It's the majority. Right. You know, four out of ten, when I first read that, I just said, well, I, I, I was curious where, where the number came from. And I see that, you, you know, it went from 2004, and now we're talking uh, incrementally. 
you know, but everybody I ask, I, I, there are there's two families that I can think of right now that actually did buy houses, and they're in the 30-year-old age group. Uh, right. But one of them spent his four years in the Navy, and he's getting uh, a quite a, a decent amount of help from the federal government because of his service, which I say good for him. You know, that was a smart thing to do. Um, and another guy, got he's getting some help from family, and he's also lucky enough to have landed a really good job on Long Island. He's in the sales department, so his education, I don't know, was going to give him the tools to be the salesman that he is. Um, and I don't think he spent $80,000 going to school. Right. And I think so many Long Islanders are in a situation where they just don't happen to have those advantages. And mm. as a result of that, and as a result of people's understandable desire to live independently, you find that seven out of ten young adults and almost six out of ten adults of all ages told the Long Island Index that they were thinking of leaving Long Island within the next five years. Mm -hmm. And that's something that needs to be something of a wake-up call, according to the people who published this study. They're they're calling for some changes in the way that Long Island does business, like well, they, well, housing. They need to. I mean, if I were a millennial at this point in time, the message I'd be getting is they don't want me here. <laughs> because there, there's nothing other than the restaurants and the bars, <laughs> you know, that, that's in my uh, my wheelhouse. I, there, I can't do a lot of anything with the, you know, housing costs, uh, all of that stuff. And then people want to have, you want to have kids? Good luck with that. Oh, my goodness. You know. Um, you know, there are there are nonprofit groups like the Community Development Corporation of Long Island, which is in Center Reach, and uh, the Long Island Housing Partnership uh, that are working with young people and, and people of all ages to try to help them get ready for home ownership or just to save for other goals. They have classes in uh, you know in, in managing your personal finances, and they also are able to figure out what kind of programs people can qualify for that can help them. There are programs where you can qualify for tens of thousands of dollars in grants and uh, low interest or no interest loans to help with home ownership. Um, there are programs that can help people get into fixer-uppers uh, and repair rundown zombie homes and uh, you know make them into uh, a good, safe, healthy place to live and also improve the community. So there definitely are solutions out there, yeah. uh, but it's a, it's a large problem that's been, uh, that's been plaguing the island for a long time. Well, I also think, too, if, if those programs are the solution that they need to publicize their successes more, I haven't seen too many. Well, maybe that's what Newsday needs to tackle next. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, think about it. You know, it, the if if the parameters of the game are such that you can't win, somebody giving you a class on how to play the game isn't going to help you. Right. <laughs> I think one of the things that I've been told by uh, by people at the Community Development Corporation of Long Island is that people who are in college now would benefit from taking one of these free classes in managing personal finances. So uh, you learn things like, you know, when you get those free credit card offers in the mail, oh, well, you know, yeah. uh, that you should not be running up those bills. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. you know, you can learn about ways to keep your student debt load as low as it can be under the circumstances, right, right. Uh, and keep your credit rating where it needs to be in order to qualify for a uh, home purchase or for a rental. Well, <laughs> I'm going to be the cynic now, so keep keep your keep your credit where it needs to be so that you can get deeper in debt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. probably, probably keeping the debt level as low as possible <laughs> and trying to save some money probably does uh, yeah. count a lot more than the credit rating. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, it's just um, I think of I grew up in Farmingdale, and so I look at Farmingdale and I kind of use that as my litmus test. You know, they they put up a bunch of new apartments in Farmingdale, and people were thrilled when it first happened until they found right. out the rents were three thousand dollars. Right. So, who were these apartments for? Well, I, I also think uh, not to. I mean, my brain is all all over here, but uh, 
The other thing that a lot of Long Islanders don't realize, it, it, unless they really looked at it themselves, is that most folks couldn't afford to buy the house they live in now. And I think that that in the United States, there's always been, until fairly recently, an assumption that each generation will thrive a oh. little bit more than the generation before it. Yes. And it's a very sobering wake-up call that that's not for happening. young yeah. adults now to realize that they may not be able to achieve the lifestyle that their parents achieved. Right. That's, that's not an easy thing to get used to. No, I, I agree. I agree. And that's part of the reason why I think that 4 in 10 number is low is, first of all, uh, I don't think there are a lot of people who like to admit that they are not part of the, uh, that American dream that we used to know where our kids did better than we did. Um, so I don't think people are willingly coming out telling anyone what their situation is. Um, so that I did have some trouble right. um, finding folks who were happy to talk about it. I mean, there were folks who were, sure. uh, but I think that it's a topic that can be a little bit thorny. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, people get dressed up and go out to dinner, and then you want to, you don't want them. I mean, if somebody asks them, how, where do you live? They, they don't want to say, with my parents. Right. And I, I, I understand I that. I, you know, I, I get that. But, hey, I'm sorry. There I'll certainly you are, of course, advantages. And I did speak with one couple who spoke about uh, some cultural traditions right. uh, in which people live uh, in t- with, with their family, you know, very often until they get married or mm-hmm. until, until mm-hmm. they are at a later later stage of life. Oh, yeah. And there definitely can be some positives to that. Oh. It can foster good relationships. You yeah. know, people can help each other out. Yep. Uh, so it's not all negative. No, no, no. And don't get me wrong. I, I'm not against them doing that. And if their parents right. are for I think that's great. Lucky you. You know, that, that you have that kind of supportive family in that atmosphere. I, I have nothing against that. It's just that not everybody gets that. And a lot of the millennials, they, like the rest of us, wanted to have that independence. It's true. And I think that w- the point that one person made to me is that living with relatives is not necessarily a bad thing. No. The problem is when you need to live with relatives right. and you don't have another choice. <laughs> Anything we do that we have to, we don't like. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Very yeah. true. Yeah. Wow. Well, obviously, I guess this is... It, now, will this kind of be an ongoing thing that you look at and like keep tabs I, on? I expect that I will. I expect that I'll continue to look not only at what's happening with young adults who are living with family members on Long Island, but also other aspects of the search for an affordable place to live on Long Island. It'll definitely be something that we'll be returning to from uh, on a fairly regular basis. Great. Well, then I hope to uh, talk to you again later on about the developments in this, because this is, this is a really interesting story, and it's a condition that I think is going to exist for a long time. Well, thank you very much, Bill. It's been really nice talking to you. Yes, thank you, you for too. Me on. Thank you, and uh, thank we want to thank Newsday too for letting us talk to you. <laughs> thank you very much. Take care. You too. Bye bye.